Thanks for joining us. Your first question this morning is from Eric Bailey, and then we'll go to Ryan Aver. Go ahead, Eric. Hey, Kel, it's good to see you again, man. Yeah, good to see you. Hey, wanted to ask you, uh, how much did Marvin's addition last year really push teammates in terms of seeing a freshman come in and make such an immediate impact? And also, while I'm not comparing the two players by any means, was it similar to how much CD's arrival really pushed that room in 2017? Well, I mean, we, we talk competition all the time. And, um, and you know, it, it doesn't matter if you've been here for two years and been a starter and you've, you know, you've had a ton of catches or touchdowns or, or you've had a lot of snaps at a position. I mean, everybody that comes in there has got an opportunity to win a job constantly. And, um, you know, Marvin, Marvin Mims is a young man that came in. And, 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 and the first thing about Marvin is, he is a, he's got high character. He's a very hard worker. So he's setting the examples. Again, we, you know, we're always talking to our players, showing videos of, of, of former players, past players, NFL greats, uh, whether it's, you know, a football or, or a, a story in baseball or, or boxing of, of what you have to do in order to get to where you want to get, in order to be successful, in order to be good. And, um, you know, he's one of those guys that kind of falls in the line of, of how hard he works. And he's extremely intelligent. He's somebody that you only have to tell something one time. You tell him one time in the meeting room and you better be right because he's going to do that way every single time. But he brought up the level of competition. And that's what we that's what we have to have. The, I mean, the, the better he is, the better the next guy is. If you want to catch the ball more, you better you better be playing better than Marvin Mims or you better be playing better than than Drake Stroops or, or whoever it is at that position. Was it, if you don't mind a follow, was it similar to, did you see the same impact CD in 2017? Did he have that kind of impact too on that room? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, very, very similar, you know, somewhat kind of, um, kind of quiet young men just kind of go up and go about their business. Uh, they're not somebody that's a, a, a very vocal guy. It's, it's interesting though, Marvin is starting to become a little bit more vocal. Um, and I think I kind of get that out of him because I'm a vocal person and I challenge a lot. Uh, so, um, you know, especially in drills out there, if I'm anywhere near, he's going to find me and uh, he's going to make damn sure that uh, that he that he that, that I feel him whenever he comes and attacks me, whether it's running around or or or, you know, pat, or, um, you know, blocking on the perimeter. But I would say those guys are very similar. Um, Marvin's heading in the right direction. Uh, still got a long way to go. Uh, glad he's here with us. Oh, thanks a bunch. Have a good week. Thanks, Eric. Ryan Aber and then Joe Bettner. Hey, Kale. Uh, how you doing hey, this morning? Yeah. Hey, I want to ask you about another of your guys, uh, Mario Williams. Uh, what have you uh, seen from him uh, so far? What stands out to you? And just uh, what kind of impact do you think he can have uh, quickly in this offense? He's got a chance to have an impact. Um, very fast. One of the fastest players on our side of the ball. Um, he's a um, he, he loves to compete. He loves to practice. He loves to play ball. Um, and um, and he's just he's a, he's a good player. He's he's an intelligent young man. Uh, he's gonna you know he's he's there's an opportunity for him to help us in the in the return game somewhere, especially in special teams. Um, but you know the opportunity for him to be out there and to be able to stretch the field, and uh, and again, as you guys have seen with all our wide receivers, our guys, I mean they're gonna play inside, they're gonna play outside, they're gonna play left side, they're gonna play the right side. But but he's definitely for for a um, young man that still should be in high school right now. He's awfully impressive out there. And, and, and again, he's just, he's, he's fast. He's, he's got speed. Um, you know, we were talking out there today and I, I made a comment on the headsets that, you know, you typically just don't see balls overthrown to the real fast guys. They just have, they have, a, they have a way to go, to go attack the ball. And um, again, besides the football side of it, he comes out there every day. He just loves to compete. He's always got a smile on his face. He just he he, he loves football. He he loves competition and he loves football. And um, glad he's here with us. Appreciate it, Kale. Have a good one. Yes, sir. Go back to Norman transcript and then Jason Kersey. Okay. Hey, Kale. You're you know one of many former OU players now assistants with the program, and you've seen a lot of those guys now in like Demarco, Joe, John, Calvin. And I'm curious, just being a coach uh, around those guys that have developed into that, how easy is it to identify maybe a, a current player that you think is on a trajectory to, you know, be a coach one day? Is that easy to, to identify when they're when they're in college playing the game? Well, when you, you know, when I look back on it, um, you know, it's a, it's a great question. When I look back on it, 
you could see the leadership skills that those guys had. Um, you know, they were they were competitors, um, and we've we've had a lot of competitors down here around here. But they were, you know, it it, it takes to something a little bit different to to be able to step right out as a as a young assistant and to be able to lead a room, to be able to have that energy to go on that road and be able to recruit, um, and and to be able to battle, you know, all the top, you know. The college programs across the country and um, you know you look back on it all all these guys that are here you know from Calvin Thibodeau to to Joe John to Brian Odom to DeMarco Murray you know first of all you know very good people you know high character guys guys that never had any problems never had any problems here never had any issues very successful college football players and some of them had success after college um, but you know they're dedicated uh, great character, hard workers, and um, again, that that all that stuff kind of typically finds those guys. Thanks so much, Kill. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jason Kersey, the Athletic, and then Austin Kurtwright. Good morning, Kale. How are you? Good, Jason. How are you? Good. Hey, I wanted to ask you as a former OU quarterback yourself, and someone who's seen Heupel, White, Bradford, all the great ones you've had through the years. What does Spencer do that, that makes him unique and special? And, and how good do you think he can ultimately end up being? Well, you know, you're, you're, naming, you're naming guys that were obviously very successful as also. You know, you're naming some guys that were Heisman Trophy quarterbacks. Right, you know, right. Um, you know, guys that uh, won a lot of championships, uh, competed at a high level, um, you know, set a lot of records. <clears throat> um, and, and definitely feel like, you know, we feel like that, that Spencer's on that trajectory to head in that direction. You know, I think the one thing that's kind of a little bit different in, in you know, with, with Spencer is um, the, the ability to make a lot of different throws with a lot of different arm angles, uh, you know, but probably, you know, he throws the ball a lot of times in situations or, or going to his left or going backwards where most coaches would say, you don't, you don't, you should not be doing that. Uh, but this, this is something that he is, you know, he's, he's worked and he's trained ever since he was in high school. He's spent a lot of time doing that. Um, I can remember we used to watch some of the workouts and um, that his, his trainer, you know, had him do back home. And, and a lot of the stuff was different than, than most of the true quarterback drills that, that, you know, they have young quarterbacks do. Um, again, he's still got a, a, a lot of his career ahead of him. Um, and, and in order to get where those guys, um, where they got, um, he still has to do so much. I mean, he he has to be every bit as good in the in the meeting room and spend all that time in the meeting room as he does out on the football field. And and you guys seen him throw the ball around, uh, and and he'll be the first one to tell you. Obviously, I didn't even speak with Coach Riley. I mean, there's still a lot of things that he can do to become a, a better football player. And uh, you know, when you're 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 leading. Uh, uh, when you're the quarterback when, and you're you're going to lead this team, you're going to be a captain. I mean, you're 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 voted a captain. You're going to be a captain already, you know. And we haven't voted captains. And I'm not saying I should not have said that, but I mean, you guys know what I mean. He's yeah. going to be the yeah, one of the leaders of this team because he's the quarterback of the University of Oklahoma. So there's there's great responsibilities there. Um, and um, as a young guy, he's you know you can I can see those things. I can see some of the change in him, you know, from last fall to this spring where he's trying to step up and, and, and take more responsibility. Thanks, Kale. Yes, sir. Austin Kurtwright, OU Daily, and then John Hoover. Hey, Kale. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Lincoln specifically. Uh, you know, being around him from his first year as a coordinator to come being head coach, how has he grown? And then how was he able to maneuver last season as, you know, this leader for how hard that last season was with the pandemic? Uh, unbelievable. I mean, he's, he's, um, you know, and you hit it. I mean, he's a leader. He's, uh, you know, obviously had an opportunity to work with, with coach Stoops for a long time. And Bob was, Bob was very, very special and one of the very best. Um, you know, I, I think the thing that, and I've said this a lot of times about what makes Lincoln so special is, I mean, he gets everything. I mean, it, it anything that has to do with, being the head football coach at the University of Oklahoma, whether it's the compliance or whether it's the finances or or academics or being a leader or a motivator or a discipline guy, um, I mean, he gets all of it. Uh, a, a recruiter, there's nothing that 
that it, that comes to a surprise um, that he hasn't already thought out. Um, and, and it's, you know, again, he, he, he has, he was just born with a gift and he obviously has spent a lot of time. He's got a lot of great mentors that has helped him throughout his, you know, career, but he, he just, he's, he's phenomenal at everything he does. And, um, again, he's, he's not only, you know, what, what you see X's and O's, he's every bit as good every, everywhere else as being a leader. Um, you know, he, he knows how to motivate individual players. He knows how to motivate this team. Uh, he knows how to discipline this team. Uh, this team follows him. Um, our coaches follow him. And, and when you find the, the, who I believe that are the great ones out in society, people tend to follow because of the things that they do and how they act. And, um, he, he's, um, he's, you know, again, he's the, he's the best in our business. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind, he's the best in our business. I haven't worked with, you know, obviously everybody, but I'm not even going to, I wouldn't even want to think about working for somebody else as long as I can work with Lincoln Riley. Thanks, Gail. Thank you. It will go to John Hoover and then Kerry Murdoch. Hey, Kale, how's it going? Good to see you again. Good, John. Good seeing you, buddy. Yeah. So recruiting. You're kind of your forte. Uh, it's changed a little bit over the past few years. Uh, I'm sure you're glad to get the dead period out of the way finally. But overall, in general, you've got the one-time transfer rule coming up. Um, you've got NIL legislation that's coming up. Recruiting is going to change even more, obviously. So where do you see it maybe going in the next few years, five years? Um, what, what kind of challenges would you expect that you'll, <clears throat> that you'll face? And then um, is there anything that's going to happen that people aren't talking about right now that maybe you're anticipating could be a problem. Well, I don't, I don't know if there's anything, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that's kind of started to happen is, is been happening. You know, it, it's, it's, there's, there's, um, it, it's definitely going to change, um, you know, with the, with the one-time transfer rule, uh, you just wonder, you know, it kind of, you know, initially it kind of makes you think of, you know, what, what basketball can do, you know, um, you know how guys can put their name in a in a you know I'm going to go to the NF or I'm going to go to the NBA but I'm not going to uh, sign sign with anybody because I might want to come back. I, I don't know how that, all that's going to unfold, and those are decisions that that each university and head coach and president and athletic director has got to to make. Um, but it, it we are uh, it is going to be challenging moving forward. There's no doubt. I um, mean we're we're about to start exploring things in college football that that has never happened before. Um, and I, I think that, you know, the relationships that, uh, your coaches and the staff has with your players, um, has always been extremely important. I think it's gotta be even more important now. I think you gotta know where your players are, um, you know, mindset when it comes to, um, you know, being a part of this program and wanting to stick with this program, um, instead of guys just, you know, wanting to jump ship and go somewhere else. And, um, but, you know, we, we're, again, we're, we're going in, 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 into stuff right now that we've never been into right now, but as a staff and as coach Riley, you know, we're, we're trying to, in our minds, we're trying to think of what other things could possibly be happening. We're, we're trying to uh, prepare ourselves for something to happen in, in six months or a year from now. And, and, you know, we, recruiting has changed so much, as you said, over years, there's so many different things that have changed. Um, you know, the social media has made it, you know, it's changed the, just the world we live in itself, but it's also changed the recruiting side of it. So um, don't really want to go into what we think are ideas of things that could possibly happen down the road, but, but it is, it's, it's going to be challenging, but you know what, it's going to be challenging for everybody. And um, it is what it is. And at the end of the day, we got to get the guys ready that are here. Uh, to be good football players and to help us win football games. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks. Kerry Murdoch and then James Hale. Hey, Kyle, how you doing? Um, good, Kerry. How are you? Good. I, I, I would imagine you take a lot of um, uh, pride in, in uh, probably always will, in what the running back position is like at Oklahoma with you know, all the tradition that you built there. So I'm curious, you know, just your feelings on seeing a former player that you recruited taking over that position. And, and does that make it easier for you to maybe, uh, you know, have conversations with him about, about coaching and, 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 you know, working with guys on a practice field? Well, I, 
you know, I, I've got a great relationship with DeMarco. Uh, we've, you know, we, we were, you know, I hope to say that we were close when he was here, uh, but, but we've taken the next step. And, uh, and he and I are, are, are very good friends. Um, and it's interesting that you say that. Uh, I, I don't know if I think I, I, uh, it, it makes it easier for me to do, but I do it anyways. <laughs> you know, that's just, that's just who I am. Um, and, uh, but I don't, I, don't, I don't do it with everybody else, but I do it with, with uh, DeMarco some at times. You know, and he kind of looks at me and he listens to me for the most part, but occasionally he'll, you know, he'll snap back at me. And, and, um, but I, I, you're right. It's, it's the relationships that we've had before. And, um, and, and again, I do, I mean, I always, you know, you know, whether it's on the field or a meeting room or a hallway, I mean, if I know that something needs to be said to a running back, I'm always going to give my two cents to him, you know, and those, those guys know that they, they're going to get it from me just as much as they get it from, from coach Murray, Murray without me, crossing my lines or my boundaries as another position coach. Uh, so, you know, and even, even coach Odom, you know, and he's on the defensive side. Now I don't talk about anything about those, those linebackers or any of that defensive side of the ball, but um, it, again, it's, um, you know, knowing the type of people that they are, I think allows me to maybe have a little bit more freedom uh, to, to visit with them about certain things um, to, to help, to help this program out. Appreciate it, Kale. Yep. Hey, uh, a couple more here, James Hale and then Brandon Drum. Hey, Kale, nice to see you, man. Hope things are going great with you and your family. Yeah, James, um, thanks, buddy. Kale, every, every wide receiver we've talked to has said they hope to have a great spring because they didn't feel like last year was a typical year for them as a wide receiver group. From what you've seen spring this year, have they been able to accomplish that? Or are they having a good spring? And who's standing out to you? I, I think we've accomplished a lot of things this spring and, and we as coaches, you know, it all starts with us, you know, uh, we, we, we got to do a better job getting across how we want certain things to get done. And it's just not all about our players on the field. Um, you know, it's, it, it starts with us. And um, again, how can we get across certain things to make these guys better, make them see them react faster in search, certain situations and just put them in more situations to, to be, to be better football players. Uh, and then on the flip side, you know, when they get inside the lines, those are the guys that's got to make the plays. And um, it, it, again, there's some things that we set out as, as Coach Riley, Coach Simmons, and myself to, that we wanted to get better at in spring football. And there's a few things that, 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 you know, without telling you guys that we've done that. We've done some really good things. And I think it's going it, to, I know it's going it's to help us in, in, in the fall and in the future. Um, you know, and, and again, at the end of the day, you, you've got to play at a high level. And again, you've got to, you know, there's, you know, we are, you know, besides grading the practices, every practice, I mean, we keep scores, we keep charts, um, you know, to keep competition going. And, and uh, you know, for example, my, you know, my group, I, you know, I can compare back to when Mark Andrews was playing or when Sterling Shepard was playing. Um, and, and how I graded those guys and the percentages they had in certain areas. And that if our players now can match those percentages, they're going to be very successful players on the field. Uh, and so those are things that, you know, that we, that we strive for, but, um, I, I do, I, I think that there's been, um, some, some things that we're getting better at, uh, you know, by no means are we there and we're still developing, um, you know, the, the two young guys that came in, uh, Mario Williams and Cody Jackson are going to be a good football player for us. Um, and, and they're going to, you know, they're going to help us in the fall, uh, depending on how much that's, that's continued up to them through the hard work this summer and in their production, when we get into fall camp, um, you know, and, and, you know, Drake Stoops has continued to continue to get better. You know, again, he goes above and, and beyond which he has to uh, because he doesn't have the true skill set that a Marvin Mims has or a, uh, you know, the speed that a Mario Williams have or, or, or whatever. So, um, but you can look around and see in college and seeing on the next level where there's been a lot of guys with his skill set who've been very successful. 
And I mean, you could sit here and say, okay, you could take those guys and, and this is what they do good. They do these things good right here, which, which gives them a chance to, to be as good as some of the guys that are more talented. And that's where Drake has moved in the direction. He's a, you know, he's a, a extremely physical kid for a smaller size guy. Yeah. Uh, he runs tremendous routes. He's got great hands. He's an extreme high competitor. Uh, so, you know, he, he's had a, you know, obviously a good spring Marvin Mims is, you know, continue to do Marvin things like he's doing. I think it's, um, you know, helped with him playing inside some, you know, and again, you're moving an extremely fast guy inside and, you know, we're linebackers and safeties are trying to cover. So, um, I, I think he loves and enjoys running around and there'll be times that he'll play outside as well. So, um, and then, you know, having Jaden Hazelwood, you know, for a full spring for, you know, for uh, hopefully he can finish this thing out, but to have him out there every single day, you know, he's, he's, he's had some, some uh, things that have happened that have kind of slowed him down a little bit through this career, but um, you know, he's, he's back to healthy and he's, boy, he made a lot of catches this morning in practice and, and some things really stood out. So I think we're heading in the right direction. Just got to keep some guys healthy and, and to uh, see where this goes. Thanks, Kale. Appreciate it, man. Good luck. Yes, sir. Thanks, so we're, we're Running low on time. Last one will be Brandon Drum. Hey, Kel, thanks for doing this. Yes. Um, hey, uh, you've been here a long time and, and seen a lot of really good teams come through here. And I know it's only spring, but is there usually a trait that you guys or you have seen throughout, you know, the 2000s, the 2004, 2003 team, 2008, that you kind of knew that there was a chance that they could be special? And do you think this team kind of has some of those those attributes? I, I think that I think you got to have you got to have uh, playmakers. You got to have some big playability guys. Um, I, I think you got to have some strong leadership. Um, obviously, a, a, a very good defense. Uh, so I, there's some things that 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 I've seen, and I know we have seen the coaches. I think we're heading in that direction. Um, and again, you you know, most importantly, you got to have the right guys leading this football team, the guys that are leading this team in the locker room, the guys that are leading this team in that dorm, and the guys that are constantly pushing. And uh, because us as coaches, it's our job to make sure that everybody's heading in the right direction. But um, I, I, again, you know, finish up spring the right way. Uh, the summer is going to be extremely important and uh, get ready to go this fall.